can tell you this. We both have a ton of love for this man. It's um, Larry Kruger in for dibs. Uh, but uh, Ron Wotus is about to join us. I bet you if we entered him into our debate, I bet you he sides with me. I bet you he sides with me. Uh, I don't know. I hadn't, I hadn't really thought about it. Well, I hadn't really given it a thought. Let's find out. Kienos Mus Macho right now with uh, the great Ron Wotus joining us here on 95.7 The Game. Uh, hey, Ron, how you doing? Hey, Mark. Hi, Larry. How you guys? You guys be nice to me now. <laughs> no, we'll be nice to you. We're just not nice to each other. Is that is, is that That's okay? Fair. That's fair. Yeah. Like, like, Here's how I'll ask it, Ron. Um, 12 games into a season... You can, you can say what about a baseball team? Well, I think we got to watch for a little bit longer. I mean, look, the team's not at full strength, missing um, Slater and Hanniger. Those are two pretty big pieces. Um, guys, you know, some guys start off cold. You know, it's funny. Someone asked me the same question the other day, and you know, I really don't evaluate in spring training because it's not a real good gauge of. How the team's going to play. I mean, guys get hot, the ball flies, you know, pitchers aren't throwing the way they throw during the season. So I think it takes a little bit of time before you really say how good or how bad the team will be. And then there's also moves that are made. So um, I think uh, we got to show a little patience. And, you know, I mean, Raj hasn't been throwing the lefty. You know, he's, he's beside himself right now and really struggling. But guys figure things out. They get better. And um, I think at least a month, month and a half into this thing, we'll have a better gauge on, on, on how the team's going to be. Um, my argument to Mark is just that, you know what, I'm seeing, and I was down there in, in uh, Scottsdale for a few days and got a chance to see some of the some of spring training. And I just think the Giants are right there on the verge of being able to kind of usher in a new era. I mean, I'd love to see Joey Bart. I mean, that that little th- uh, throw him out yesterday at second base was just bang bang. He named uh, nabbed Outman. It was a it's just a p. He just put that right on the bag. Great throw by Bart. I'd love to see Bart and maybe Bailey behind the plate. I'd I'd love to see Casey Schmidt this year in the big leagues. I'd like to see Will Wilson. I'd like to see um, you know Luis Matos. I was out in Salt River. Ron, when uh, Matos parked one against Colorado a few weeks back, uh, Will Clark has told me about Vaughn Brown, and, and uh, you know, obviously Elliot Ramos is up. I, I think this team is not that far from playing, from going with you know a full fledged youth movement in the lineup, and I think it's possible we could see that this year. And I, I'm, my argument to him is, I'd like to see it sooner rather than later. You you're a developmental guy. You see the where these guys are in their in their development. How close am I to being right on on those guys being ready to contribute? Well, you mentioned some you know really good names. You know, Phil Harrison in there as well. I know he's a pitcher, and you were staying with the position players. Um, you know, I I've seen more of uh, Schmidt. I, I've seen you know more of Will Wilson. I've seen. More of Von Brown because I was in San Jose last year. I haven't seen as much as I like Amatos. I, I've seen a lot of him, but he's highly regarded with a lot of potential. You know, he has age on his side. Um, you know, you didn't mention McCray. He, he may be, a, a, you know, two, three years away, but he's extremely talented. You have Arteaga, the shortstop. That's a legitimate shortstop in the minor leagues. But to your point, guys that contribute can, can contribute sooner. I think you mentioned Schmidt, you know, Ramos. This is the best I've seen him. He made an adjustment in the spring, and he's continuing to swing good. I, I saw him lay off a couple sliders yesterday that he would have just chased in the past, and they were they were borderline strikes, good pitches. So there are some guys coming. Um, I don't know about a complete youth movement. I think that, uh, you know, we do, do have the Confortos and the Hanegers. But I think there's some pieces that w- w- that will end up helping the Giants this year. There's no question about it. Ron Wotus is with us here on 95.7 The Game. Ron, I, I, how would you describe the the philosophy with the pitching staff? I know a lot of fans right now are looking at this and going, okay, we're having a hard time putting our finger on who's in the starting rotation, who's coming in in the, in, in the middle innings, how many starters do they have, is is there a method to this madness that you can put into words? 
Well, I think time will tell. I mean, the, the, the good thing is that we do have seven starters. And, um, you know, they're using those guys, uh, the extra starters in the pen as long guys are piggybacking. You know, I've never been on a club where we did this for a full season, so it's new to me as well. But I know we have major league arms. Those seven guys are major league players. You know, you're, they're not they're not suspect guys that uh, you're not sure how they're going to handle it. I think I think the question is is what you're asking is how is it going to shake out? You know, later in the game, um, you know, in the seventh, eighth, and ninth, and you know, most of the good teams you see they have shut down a shutdown bullpen in the 7th, 8th, and ninth. You look at the World Series years going back to 2002, right? We had Worrell, Rodriguez, Nen. They could get righties or lefties out. And that's always, that's always a big advantage for a manager because you look really, really smart when you have a, you know, a Trevor Hoffman or, or a setup guy that can get righties and lefties out. You don't have to play the matchup game because you know, as a manager, you, you, you're not going to look as smart when you play the matchup game and things don't work out. So um, we have some pieces down there. Um, we need Raj to throw the ball, um, you know, the way he's capable, get him on track, you know, Duvall's solid at the end of the game. But I guess to your point is, you know, how the extra starters will be used, will be pitching late. And the bottom line is if, hey, if, if they get a good half a game uh, for Sunday piggyback, with with Junis, he's done a tremendous job, you know, and he throws well. Well, then you're going to save those those uh, you know late inning relievers that you you might need every night. So, I think jury's out. We'll see how it plays out, and it all is going to boil down to performance. You know, we got major league guys, so we'll see how they perform and and how Gabe utilizes uh, the bullpen. Ron, where did you watch last night's game? Were you were you there in the ballpark? Are you watching it yeah. on the tube? Yeah, I was at the ballpark. Yeah. So I'm watching it last night and Muncie comes up and there, you know, it's first and third, and I'm just I'm I'm going, walk this guy. <laughs> Please walk this guy. I mean, I can't remember too many hitters who have been better against the Giants consistently than what Muncie's been doing. I guess Arenado and Goldschmidt in recent years, but I mean it reminds me of like watching Ron Say in the late seventies. What were you thinking there? Do you, I mean, it was first and third. Do you load the bases to pitch around Muncie? He wasn't swinging it well coming into this series, but he sure is. He looks like B- Barry Bonds against the Giants right now. <laughs> I know. What what a series he had. I mean, he came in hitting 120, and, and you just throw that out the window. And how about the second game of the series? He didn't even play, right? right. Um, he, he wasn't even in a lineup. Um, well, you know, for me, I, I think that, it's hard to walk a guy um, in that scenario. I think it's about making pitches. And, you know, I think one thing is an industry that you don't see anymore in the game. When you have a guy killing you, um, you used to be able to knock him down, right? You used to be able to throw inside, you know, move his feet, do something to make him uncomfortable. And I think as an industry, we don't pitch inside enough. Now, I'm not saying to hit somebody. I'm saying to move a guy's feet and to recapture part of that plate, make him realize he has to cover both sides of that plate. And when you get a hitter thinking like that, it's, it's much more difficult. So I see a lot of comfortable at bats. Um, and when a guy's hot and he has a comfortable at bat, um, if you, if you make a mistake or you, you put the ball in the zone and, and he covers, he covers a lot of pitches, you know, but I've always believed if you pitch in more, it opens up the outside. It opens up the offside. It makes it much more difficult to hit. I, I will ask you this, Ron, and, and and not to put you in a in a weird spot, but you know how this works, fans. We've now had twice. I've had two days already on this young season where one person or another has come in and suggested that that uh, that the Giants should have dotted somebody, whether it be my, Max Muncy or believe it or not, Aaron Judge for not signing with the Giants. <laughs> what? Which? 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 Yeah, that's absurd. But anyway. What like can you even speak on that? What does the culture say right now with regard to uh, sending a message? Yeah, that, that's 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 crazy. That guy must have grew up in the '60s or the '70s or something that uh, to want to hit somebody. Look, I, you know that's pretty much out of the game. I mean, you, you don't see many bean balls anymore. You don't see guys hit home runs and they get drilled. Um, you know. 
I, I think, you know, pitching around the guy, uh, you know, moving his feet, uh, pitching him tough, you know, making sure you don't leave anything over the plate because those days are long gone. You know, I mean, you just don't see it and, and you, and you don't see people leaving the benches. And that's probably, that's probably for the good of the game. I mean, obviously there's an entertainment value that, you know, I'm sure you and Larry love to see once in a while in some <laughs> of the fans, but it's really out of the game. And, 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 it, and it's out of the game too, because it can't happen in the minor leagues. I remember my last year that I was managing in the minor leagues. You know, I got suspended two games if if there was a bean ball and they threw out the pitcher. The manager got suspended, and we all had two hundred dollar fines. And for the players back then, two hundred dollar fines was a lot of money. So if, if you think they cleaned it, they cleaned it up in the minor leagues, and now it's pretty much cleaned up in the major leagues. It's been going on for a long time that those things don't happen. You're listening to ninety five seven The Game, KGMZ FM and HD One San Francisco, always live on Twitch, YouTube, and the free Odyssey app. You know, one of the guys that I just love watching, and I didn't even know he was this good of a, a fielder, is this Bryce Johnson. Now he got concussed last night. He made an incredible couple couple incredible efforts in center field. One he caught. Um, but it's not that, Veron. It's 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 the the jump that he gets and how pure it is and how clean how correct it is. I mean, it kind of gives me some Darren Lewis vibes, and I know you've been in this organization a long time, so you probably remember D. Lou. What? Oh, yeah. do you, what do you? You're a defense guy, and I know you position guys and and have for years. What do you? Th- I mean, Sabes told me years ago that he thought three center fielders were almost required to be successful in this huge outfield. What do you think of Bryce Johnson though as a defender and and the and the jumps that he gets? Because it seems he seems like such a natural. Well, he, he has a tool that we don't have a whole lot of, and that's, you know, um, speed. I mean, real speed. Um, and, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't that long ago. You, you couldn't play center field. Uh, and, and you're going way back. You didn't play center field unless you had plus speed in the outfield. But the game has changed to get the offensive player um, in the outfield. Center fielders don't have uh, that type of speed. Not all of them anymore. You, you take lesser speed for more of a bat, just like kind of the shortstop position evolved, right? You don't have the Mark Belangers and, and the guys that just pick it. You know, now you have the A-Rods and, and, and the Correas and the offensive players. Um, but Bryce has that above-average speed where he can make an impact on defense, and, and we don't have a lot of guys that can do that. It's, it's nice to see him. You know, getting some hits. He had a great spring training and stealing the bases, and especially with the bases the way they are. I think, you know, MLB has accomplished what they wanted about creating more stolen bases. They may have overbaked it a little bit, honestly. I feel bad for the pitchers. The bases are closer and, uh, you know, they can only throw over twice. That gives, that gives a runner at first so much more of an advantage, you know, because they throw over once, they're probably not going to throw over as, as everybody's talking about. So, there's just base runners are becoming way more daring stealing second. You know, you used to have to be daring to steal third, but now, now it's at first. So that's what Bryce brings to the table. And if he can hold his own at the plate and he's made some great adjustments, uh, putting the ball in play, um, his speed's going to play. So it's great to have him on the club. Um, I'm hope we're able to carry him when, you know, everybody gets healthy. There's going to be some tough decisions to make. Ron Wotus with us here on 95.7 The Game. Larry's in for dibs on Willard and Dibs. Hey, Ron, you, you know, you mentioned the early struggles of Taylor Rogers, and we know what his resume is. I'm going to ask you the same question about Logan Webb. In, any concerns with the way he started the year? No, no, not, not with Logan. I mean, look, he, he's got great movement. He's got, a, he, he's got a really good sinker. He's got a really good changeup. His, his slider's there. Um, I know he's frustrated. You know, I, I talked to Logan a lot, a lot and uh, he's not happy with his performance. I'm really not concerned about him. I mean, there may be, you know, and, and I don't think it's the pressure of being a number one. You know, when you're number two, you know, you, you don't have the same pressure as being a number one. You're not going against, you know, everybody else's number one. You know, your expectations go up a notch where, you know, and he feels like he, he goes out there, he wants to throw a shutout every time he goes out on the mound. You know, I, I don't think that's affecting him, but all those things come into play. I just think, you know, he didn't have his change up the last time out, and um, that really hurt him. I mean, that's a big pitch for him. He didn't have a good feel for it. You know, guys go through it. I, I do think it's early. You're, you're in Arizona. Everything's a little bit different. He's had three starts now. It's a regular season. You know, sometimes it takes guys a little bit to get their feet on the ground, but I, I'm not concerned about, about Webby. 
We're talking to Ron Wotus uh, today, a little Giants off day. They're uh, you know, a two and four homestand now off to Detroit for the for the uh, road trip. Um, you know, Major League Baseball's new rules designed to, you know, speed up the pace of play and encourage more action. I mean, it seems to be working, Ron. I mean, batting average I'm seeing across the leagues up about 15 points. Stolen base have spiked by 30 uh, percent. The average game time is down 31 minutes. Um, it's on track to be the sport's lowest going back to 1984. The only thing, and I mentioned this to Alex Wood yesterday, is that I don't love the pace of play when it gets to the late innings. I feel like it's a little too restrictive and it, it, it interrupts the, the actual pace of the game. Um, in the late innings, the game always has slowed down in the late innings and yet they haven't, they don't have any mechanism right now to account for that. Does that bother you? Or, I mean, I think I basically like speeding up the game. I just don't like speeding up the seventh, eighth, and ninth as much. I understand what you're saying, you know, and that's a great question for, obviously, the veteran players that pitch late in the game. And I think a lot of them would agree with you. I mean, when the game's on the line, and it could be in a sixth inning with the bases loaded, and you got to navigate a lineup. Sometimes you need to. You know, you need to, you know, step off the mound and gather your thoughts. Now, the hitters can do it because they can step out one time, right? But a pitcher, they're letting him do it, but it's by disengaging the rubber. Well, that counts as a throwover. Now, if you have men on base that can run, now you're putting yourself at a disadvantage. So, again, I think, you know, I kind of feel for the pitchers. And, um, uh, you know, whether they change it or not, I don't know. I think they're probably extremely happy. You, you just mentioned all the stats that are going the way they wanted it to go. And overall, I think uh, everybody's, you know, happy with it. The masses, you know, the, the younger generation that they're trying to get back, the games are shorter. I think people are liking that and the entertainment value. The balls are flying out of the park again. You know, they're, they're probably hot. Again, I feel a little bit sorry for the pitchers um we'll see if they if they make some adjustments but i doubt they're going to slow it down you know the longer this goes on it, the player is just going to have to deal with it but i agree with you larry as a veteran guy you know this has always been a thinking man's game and we're losing that you know I, i'm going to continue and say if the one rule they should get rid of in my opinion they, they should change it next year you know where the a pitcher has to face three batters um, before you can remove them from the game. I mean, you're tying a manager's hands. The game's on the line. You bring a guy in with the bases loaded, he walks the first two. You shouldn't have to leave him out there. I don't think that's slowing down the game. Um, now with that, we have this pitch clock and the way the game's being played it, it, by by making more moves with the bullpen. Yeah, that's a really interesting point. I, I, I think we agree with you there. Ron, uh, I want to thank you for two things. First of all, thank you for coming on. And second of all, thank you for explaining to Larry that we don't go with the youth movement on April 13th. Thank you, Ron. <laughs> I think he's taking a victory lap on yeah, me right there. That's he's, right. he's trying to dunk on me, Ron. That's right. uh, well, hey, Larry, look, the Giants want to win. Farhan, Cap, you know, we don't rebuild, right? I, I've heard that many times. We, we, we want to win games, and we want to be competitive and be in the mix, and, and I expect this team will be there. Uh, at the end of the season, fighting for a playoff spot. There it is. I'm you. I'm making t-shirts. We don't rebuild. That's a t-shirt. <laughs> I'm making it. Thanks for your time, Ron. Have a great day, man. Good being with you guys. All right, there he goes, Ron Wotus.